Welcome back to Operation Freedom, folks. I'm Dr. Dave Janda. We're here every Sunday from 3 to 5 on Wham Talk 1600. I am very, very fortunate to have back with us someone I consider a friend, and he's actually one of the most honest and well-respected analysts in the precious metals arena. He is the most well-known silver specialist in the world. Ted Butler has single-handedly, over the past 30 years, identified, dissected the manipulative practices of large banks and financial institutions in the silver and precious metals market. I consider Ted to be one of the saviors of our financial system, along with GATA, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, and Eric Sprott. Ted, welcome back to Operation Freedom. Hey, Dave. Good to be with you. So, Ted, you last joined us uh, about six months ago. A tremendous amount has transpired in the silver and gold markets since you la since our last interview. What are some of the most significant developments you believe have occurred in the silver market over the past several months? Um, well, it has been a, a very uh, eventual year, very significant uh, number of developments. Um, off the top, first thing would have to be the um, the price movement itself. Um, as we're speaking, we're up slightly for for, for the for the year to date from uh, December 31st, uh, where we finished around $31, uh, and we're running as I speak with you today in the uh, 34, 34 and a half dollar mark. Um, in the interim, however, we had run up uh, to almost $50, the old uh, all-time high at the very end of April, mm -hmm. uh, suffered a 30% correction down to the low $30 mark, had a rally back up to the uh, almost $44 mark, and then uh, once again another 30% uh, decline down to below thirty dollars, and we've recovered a bit since then. So, these are very unusual uh, price movements, um, considering that silver is a world commodity, and that the production and consumption um, of a world commodity like silver does not vary that much from day to day. It's impossible mm -hmm. um, to have a, a thirty percent price decline in, in a world commodity. Uh, with no um, apparent and, and visible reason for, for such a decline is, is virtually impossible. Um, yet we've had that uh, in spades this year, twice this year mm -hmm. in, uh, in silver, both in the very beginning of May and in uh, just uh, in the, this past September. Um, I would say that that's almost proof positive for um, manipulative activity because you just don't move a market, a world commodity, 30% in, in a matter of days um, without some big, big uh, visible macroeconomic explanation, which we had none. So the first thing I'd say is price, uh, the price movements this year. Uh, other developments would include some historic um, regulatory developments, uh, the enactment or the the vote to at least enact um, position limits, mm -hmm. which will eventually um, solve and fix the silver manipu manipulation problem. Um, we're past this year, only it's going to be a, a while before um, those regulations are uh, implemented. Ted, when you're speaking about the price that's occurred, the price fluctuations, um, you know, I've characterized them, these two big takedowns, uh, almost essentially drive-by shootings in the financial world, I characterize them as. And these 30% jump uh, uh, bumps down uh, in May 1st and then again in September. You know, I I've characterized them, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I, I, I characterize, characterize them as being criminal manipulative takedowns. I, I don't think you can come up with a, a reasonable, plausible uh, uh, description than, than than what you've come up with, Dave. It's uh, uh, it's 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 clear as day. It's impossible for markets to move like this, a, a world commodity like silver, um, without a, a manipulation being present. Uh, you you just unless you know we we were all vis all, all of a sudden a supply of silver greatly increased or the demand. Uh, great, greatly decreased and it was visible to all. Um, you, you can't reach any any conclusion other than the conclusion that you've reached. This was a, this was a drive-by shooting and uh, one of the most blatant manipulative acts that uh, I've seen and, and t t times two because it happened twice this year uh, in the market. No other uh, world commodity has ever declined by 30 percent. 
uh, in a matter of days, as silver did twice this year. Um, it, it just has never happened. I don't think it can happen without some you know, basic uh, big hard frost freeze comes in and Mm -hmm. uh, wipes out a uh, big significant percentage of a particular crop, something like that. Uh, This was, uh, you know, the fact that the that the regulators and the exchange are, are not all over this um, is just uh, shameful. It's uh, so obvious that uh, a child could see it. So, Ted, who do you believe did it and how did they do it? Uh, well, basically, I'd, I'd cast the uh, the blame generally in the general direction of the big commercial traders um, on the COMEX. We call them commercials as opposed to speculators, but they are speculating. They're just financial organizations, banks, um, uh, large trading organizations um, that have a dominant and controlling uh, influence uh, and position uh, on the leading future exchange, the COMEX, which is owned by the, the CME. So I would cast a, uh, the general uh, uh, finger of blame at these large commercial firms who act in, in unison. If you want to get a little bit more specific, oh, sure. uh, the large, yeah, why not? The, mm-hmm. the largest single short, documented short, um, on the COMEX is, uh, is J.P. Morgan. Mm-hmm. They, they took over uh, Bear Stearns' big concentrated short position in, in silver and gold um, when Bear Stearns went o- under in uh, May, March of 08. And uh, so since that time, it's been J.P. Morgan that has been the single biggest short with the biggest uh, single motivation and, and gain uh, when these big declines take place. So you got to, you know, I don't say that they're responsible for every every single trade, mm-hmm. but they've they're the enablers uh, because of their giant concentrated short position in COMEX silver. Um, they basically serve as the uh, lead blocker and uh, uh, the leader of the gang uh, of these commercials who who are just having their their way with the silver, and it's uh, it's it's just deplorable. And and Ted, you alluded to this earlier. I I also uh, believe that our regulatory agencies. I've been very hard on them. Uh, you're a much better man than me, and you're much more patient than I am. But I've been very very hard on the uh, CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They recently had a, a meeting October 18th, where, as you mentioned earlier, that they instituted or not instituted, but they they talked about the position limits, passed them into being, and and there's going to be a little bit of delay in, in, in when they're implemented. And we'll talk about that in a sec. But one of the things they pointed out is is that um, before they can really put these into effect or really talk about a schedule, they have to define what a swap is. Ted, what's a swap? A uh, swap is just another term for a futures contract that is not traded on a uh, licensed and uh, visible organized exchange. A uh, futures contract that is traded over the counter, OTC is uh, basically a swap it's uh, not a uh, something to you know to it's an o- over the counter not a centrally cleared transaction uh, swap is kind of the same as a futures contract only it's not traded on a futures exchange well ted this is why i bring it up it took mm-hmm. you 22 seconds to define what a swap is and one of the big problems I had with that October 18th meeting is they said, oh, yeah, they passed position limits three to two. And then they said, OK, we're going to put them into effect. But really, the first thing we have to do is we have to define what a swap is. And then 60 days later, we will then implement uh, the limits uh, for um, for the front month. But for the longer term options, uh, that that's going to take longer. And I think, you know, in your analysis, I believe you've said it could take between one and two more years. Um, I, I agree. It's, it's, it, 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 it's a little bit more complicated than that in that uh, I think it's, uh, they have to define um, it has to be in exactly the same form and equivalent, the future is equivalent, and it takes a little bit of time to do it. I don't think it takes that long. I, I agree with you in, in, in principle, um, but you've got to remember that uh, we're undoing or the Commodity Commission is attempting to undo um, close to uh, three decades worth of uh, uh, negligence, uh, three decades worth of 
uh, a time in which uh, we moved away from uh, regulation into a deregulated um, environment. And uh, to go back, uh, is, especially when there's, there's fierce opposition, uh, can, can, take, can take some time. And uh, there is fierce opposition uh, to, to position limits still. Uh, it's, not, uh, the, it's not an opposition that's coming from the public because the no. public stands to gain from these position limits. Mm-hmm. Um, the people who will be necessarily um, uh, hurt, for lack of a better word, uh, the exchanges and the very large traders are the most influential um, participants in the market. They're severely opposed to position limits, and they're doing everything they can to slow it down. Um, you know, this is what we call, I guess, uh, compromise when it comes to politics. They're delaying the uh, implementation. They're uh, maybe um, moderating and softening some of the of the principles in order to to get it through. But um, I, I'm in agreement with you. This is not something that uh, uh, should be taking this long. Um, and you know, the sooner it gets here, the the better the uh, the public will be served. Well, and I agree. I, obviously, the criminals are upset because they're being told they can no longer rob the bank on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I mean, today's a, a good example of it. The the Japanese, you know, de, uh, depreciated their currency against the U.S. dollar. Um, you would think when you have a depreciation event, John Embry's talked about this from Sprott Asset Management. You would think gold would have been up a hundred bucks, silver up two bucks. Instead, you know, they're both getting hit. And and again, I think. Here we go again. If the CFTC had done their job, obviously, months, years ago, let alone on October 18th, and said, boom, the limits are going in now, we probably wouldn't be looking at that kind of a market today. Um, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Dave. It's... Uh... Uh, these stories that we hear from time to time that are, you know that that are used to explain why uh, prices have moved usually moved down um, uh, make no sense when you when you analyze them so um, mm-hmm. the real um, the, the real reasons behind the, the, the price movements are, are usually hidden and, and, and out of sight. In this particular case, it happens to do with the inner workings of the paper market. Mm-hmm. Uh, they dropped this market, as you're talking, when, they, when the announcement was made last night, very thin trading conditions that could have just as easily gone the other way. It should have gone the other way. Mm-hmm. But uh, people, once the price sets the, the tone, if, if the price is down, everybody uh, is looking for a bad Irish explanation for why the price went down, um, and you know the the mass media and 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 the news reports will give the public what they want. They want to hear a bearish explanation mm-hmm. on a down day. They're going to give it to it. The, uh, uh, the 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 news follows the price. The price is being set um, in, in in for different on in, in on different levels. In the case of silver. And to a large extent, gold, uh, most of the time, the price is being set uh, based on these um, manipulative activities uh, uh, that take place in the paper market on the COMEX. One of the other problems I have with the CFTC, Ted, and tell me if I'm wrong, I was outraged when I read their report from the October 18th meeting. There were thousands, thousands of, of, of just the general public that had petitioned the CFTC about silver, about uh, the, the number of contracts that should be the limit, such as 1,500. You know, in their report, um, these people that have gone around saying that they're so responsive to the public and, and asking the public for their input, so such as Gensler and Chilton and the rest of them, in that report, they essentially ignored the public. I mean, it was almost like a back-of-the-hand kind of a deal. Um, th- there's no question. I mean, that's a, this is uh, goes to the heart of the matter. The the official comments that were um, published in the Federal Register um, on position limits, which just came out the other day, uh, ran 300 pages. It's mm-hmm. very highly technical. 
it's uh, somewhat arcane to the uh, to the average person. It's somewhat arcane to me, and uh, I, I look at this pretty closely. But uh, I was uh, outraged and insulted, personally insulted, um, because so many comments, four or 5,000 comments by my count, I, I, it's hard to count them all because you have to go through them individually. About four or 5,000 official public comments were submitted on silver asking that the uh, limit uh, be uh, no more than 1,500 contracts to eliminate uh, concentration and the potential for manipulation um, that that the in the in the official review in the, in the Federal Reserve that the Commission chose to completely um, ignore and and not mention um, that so many people wrote in on a specific issue and they didn't these people didn't write in uh, with a specific there was no other specific request for a, a certain number of contracts in any any other commodity. It was just people wanted 1500 At my instigation, I, I admit that. I explained it. I wasn't trying to uh, brainwash anybody. There's mm -hmm. good reason why that the limit in silver should be 1500 contracts. Um, and the, all the commission had to do was to come out and acknowledge that so many people uh, wrote in, and they could discuss and say why they didn't feel uh, the 1500 contracts was uh, appropriate and disagreed and overruled, that's fine. Um, but to make no mention mm -hmm. whatsoever, to first of all, these people went out of the way. The commission itself went out of its way to uh, solicit public comment, because when you're making a, uh, a rule change of the magnitude that is, that is uh, taking place under the Dodd-Frank Act, um, there are strict procedures to go by. I'm not a lawyer, but there's a, uh, a, a law called the Administrative Procedures Act that uh, uh, dictates that uh, the public has an input when a big rule uh, making is taking place and uh, prescribe that the uh, public's will should be considered. Um, well, in, in the review of, of the, on the Federal Register, this 300-page document, um, not one mention was made of the number of, uh, uh, of, of public comments that came in, uh, that people took the time to contact the Commission and have their, um, uh, their opinion uh, recorded, uh, to not um, even acknowledge it. They don't have to agree with it. They just have to. They do have to acknowledge it and and weigh the public input according to my interpretation of the law. Um, they didn't do that. So it's a, it's an insult. Uh, if I was a lawyer, I'd sue them. But mm -hmm. I'm not. And um, you know, I, I, you can't uh, win suing the government. But it was a <laughs> it was an insult. It was a um, uh, a, a very uh, a disservice uh, uh, to, to the American public, and uh, all these these commissioners are, you know, sworn in. They 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 they, they uh, swear an oath to uphold the law, and to and to serve the public. Of your public servant, servant, you you should mm -hmm. be serving serving the public. They they did not serve the public in this particular case, and and if you didn't feel outraged and, and insulted, then uh, you don't understand the issue. Well, Ted, when I looked at that document, I believe, you know, one of the things I talk about on this show uh, fairly often is uh, the kleptocracy in our country, the, the incestuous relationship between big government and big business. And I believe that document is, is um, it, it exemplifies what I've been talking about. <laughs> I can't argue. In fact, I, I'll even make a connection. Uh, you know, there's a great uh, dissatisfaction under the surface, uh, and, and, and rightly so, for uh, for wrongdoings uh, resulting in uh, you know in, in, in protests and, uh, and and in many cities. And it's uh, you know people are fed up with the big banks. They're fed up with the mm -hmm. government not being responsive to the uh, to the average citizen. And I don't think anything could exemplify. Mm -hmm those ills um, than this particular uh, circumstance in, uh, that just uh, transpired with these uh, position limits and the official comments from the, uh, from the government, uh, the CFTC, in the, on the Federal Register. It's, uh, it, it's outrageous. It should make your, your blood boil. It, it typifies and exemplifies everything that's wrong, that uh, you know, the public be damned. Well, I'll tell you something. Every time I see Jamie Dimon's face on CNBC or CNBS, whatever you want to call it, blood shoots out of my eyeballs just on this issue alone. 
Well, I, I try not to make it personal, but I, I certainly understand uh, uh, the sentiment. I, it, it's, uh, it, it's an institutional problem mm -hmm. uh, more than, a, than an individual problem, uh, I, I think. It's, uh, it's a crime in progress. Yes, this, it is. Uh, heavy, uneconomic uh, shorting, uh, paper shorting of silver for the sole purpose of containing the price, even though they haven't really been successful no. over time, nor, nor will, will they, they be, but right. the, the mere fact that they're they're attempting it and doing it this is an ongoing crime in progress this silver manipulation and it's just amazing that you can say these things write these things as you know i write them consistently i send mm -hmm. them to the exchange cme i send them to uh, to jamie diamond at uh, at jp morgan i certainly send them to the commo everybody at the commodity commission and uh, you get uh, no response um and it gives you that of uh, that, that opinion that that feeling that you were just describing that uh, uh you know they're above it all right. and uh, uh, they're not responsive to the uh, uh, the collective will of the public. Well, that being said, the good news mm -hmm. is that the criminal takedown, the manipulation, is in the process of ending. And Eric Sprott, who's been on our show before, who I, I have the utmost respect for, uh, has stated on a number of occasions, that, including on our show, that uh, silver is the single greatest investment uh, in the next decade. Do you agree with that? Well, not only do I agree with it, Eric is a, is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a good friend. I should disclose a, uh, maybe not a good friend, but he's a subscriber and, uh, somebody I do highly respect. Um, I, I do agree with that, he, that it, ha it will be, uh, most likely the, uh, the investment of the next decade. The only place I would disagree with him slightly is I also think it was the, the investment of the last decade. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, That's if right. you go back and, and check actual performance, um, over the uh, any you know ten year period of time um, uh, covering covering the last ten years uh, you 'll see that uh, silver performed uh, better than anything else, so I think in my mind i think it 's the, the the investment of the the past and the coming uh, decade uh, that uh, so happily, obviously, I happen to agree with uh, with Eric and I know you don 't like to stick numbers on where you think things are going Ted, but um, is there any you know, you're the world's expert in, in the silver market. As this manipulation ends, J.P. Morgan and the rest of the um, big bullion banks that have criminally been manipulating the market, they're still going to have to cover more and more shorts down the line. And the silver is continually held in stronger and stronger hands. Do you see this as a, um, a little bit of an increase in silver, or do you see this as an explosive event to the upside? Well, at, at some point, it, it, it seems to me that it, that it has to be explosive. Uh, you're gonna, you know, it, it, it does. It should be silver should be at a higher price than it is right now, and would be at a higher price, substantially higher price, uh, by a factor of say two or three from where we are right now, if if the manipulation uh, was not in effect. However, it's, it's the reason I hesitate a bit on, uh, on, on price projections because there's two kinds of price projections. One is, you know, what would the price like, what will the price likely be over the long, uh, uh haul on, on, a, on an average basis? And, and that you can, um, you can come up with some reasonable numbers. I can, you know, obviously, I was talking about it might go to fifty dollars when it was uh, four or five dollars. That seemed outrageous. Well, you know, fifty dollars doesn't seem so outrageous anymore because um, we did uh, come close to hitting that uh, earlier this year, and I think we will again. Um, and and some some factor above that, okay? But that's like if every if we lose the manipulation, uh, terminate it, and finally the Commodity Commission does what it that should be doing and uh, there's no more manipulation in the market, it'll run at a, at, a, at a much higher price. But the kicker is, and, and this is the, the problem with trying to get, you know, an exact number, there's another number out there, okay, that is not um, the uh, long-term, what the long-term economic free market clearing price would be, which is going to be a high number. It's going to be a number uh, uh, that is um, uncovered and printed, okay, in, in, in the high of a probably a bubble and a panic buying situation. Mm -hmm. It will not be most likely this number that I'm talking about will not be um, 
uh, a sustainable number. It mm-hmm. will not be a number that is going to stay out there, and people will have to make a decision at some point if prices really get crazy. You know, where do I peel this off? Where do I ring the cash register and uh, and take a profit? And uh, I'm already convinced that whatever that number is for me, and, and I'm about as bullish as, as you could be um, and have been for a long time, um, whatever number I pick is, is invariably going to be too low uh, mm-hmm. in this in this panic blow off period when everybody discovers or enough people around the world discover the merits of silver and decide that they want it. Keeping in mind also that silver is very much an industrial commodity that's needed just like copper or crude oil or any other commodity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you're going to therefore get as investors rush to buy silver to take advantage of it of its price going up. You're going to invariably get invariably get some type of industrial user panic to build up inventories, mm-hmm. okay, because nobody maintains inventories in anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and when when the shortages do appear and the delays and shipments to users, um, both investors and industrial users are going to uh, go into a panic mode to buy, and that action is going to cause prices to go to an unreasonable or unsustainable high price. So you have a long-term price, which is some significant uh, distance from uh, from where we are right now. If I had to pick a number, you know, pick numbers somewhere between fifty and a hundred dollars. But there's another number out there that should come into play when you take rhyme and reason and calculations and supply demand and everything mm-hmm. else and you throw them out the window right. because people are panicking in a panic people will pay you know any price uh, both to the upside and to the downside it's a, it's a more of a a collective human emotion uh, kind of a thing, and it, and it defies, you know, rational um, uh, expectation. The only thing you, sh- you, sh- you know, if you see this coming, if you see this potential, which I see, I consider it almost inevitable. I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but I can tell you that the conditions exist for it to happen. So when it when it does happen, it's going to be a shock. Mm-hmm. It's a, it, any number that could un- be uncovered in this, um, you know, panic uh, type buying situation is going to sound so unreasonable to what current prices are right now that I I don't bother making a number. We'll we'll see soon enough. Right. Kid, I'd like to thank you for all that you do to educate and empower every person in our country and around the world. And folks can follow you through uh, butlerresearch.com, is that correct? Sure, yeah. I have. A, uh, you can look it up through Google, butlerresearch.com, and uh, you, know, you can try it for a month or so. And if, if it's not for you, then, you know, then there's, uh, there's no long-term commitment. It's anyway. the best money anybody could spend. Ted, thank you for all that you do. Folks, you've been listening to Operation Freedom. I'm Dr. Dave Janda on WAM Talk 1600. We're here every Sunday from 3 to 5.